Okay, everybody, we are back with this week's tutorial. We are sewing the Novelty Kimono Robe. It is a, a robe on my website, and I have a little different uh, camera view for you today. I'm hoping that you'll be able to see a little bit more closely um, how I am putting this together. Uh, my robe is a little shorter than the long version. Um, as you can see, my fabric ends about here. I cut it like waist length. Uh, just to simplify the process a bit and give you an idea of um, how to do the top part of the robe. We'll cover the bottom part in another segment. So for today, I'm starting with the back. So you can see this is my uh, neckline here, and um, you can stay stitch that if you like. Uh, for a stay stitch, I would use probably about uh, 2.5 on your sewing machine. Um, that would keep it from stretching. I am not going to do that for this tutorial. I'm just going to move along and uh, go ahead and start with the shoulder seams. So here's my other front piece and here's my shoulders. And we're gonna get this matched up here, matching my raw edges. I'm using a size 11 needle in my machine. Um, and an all-purpose thread. I like cotton thread. You can use something else if you prefer. I like the Guterman uh, thread works well. Um, or you can use, you know, whatever brand you prefer. Uh, for this, I'm going to always start my seams with the needle down in the fabric. Uh, it keeps the machine from jumping ahead. It keeps things from getting stuck down into the feed dog of your machine. So always begin your seam with the needle down into the fabric. I have a stitch length of 3.0 and I'm using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance here. So while I'm sewing these, if you guys wanna uh, let me know where you're checking in from. The last uh, broadcast that I did, we had people from all over everywhere. Africa and the UK and um, all over the United States. So here's that seam. That's the first of the two shoulder seams. And you can trim your threads off. Now in most cases, you would probably wanna serge this. If you have a serger, if not, you could use pinking shears to uh, finish this seam. It's just, a, I'm using just a cotton fabric. I'm not gonna do the seam finishes while you're waiting. I'm just gonna move on to the other shoulder. Here we go. Same thing, I'm just matching it up. Five eighths of an inch seam, back tack a little bit, just a couple stitches for the back tack. Doesn't have to be much. I do not use pins. And when I sew, I like to have one hand behind the presser foot. And one in front to control my fabric. Okay, and that's our shoulder seam. So that's, that's like the easiest thing um, to do. This robe is really very easy. It's great for beginners because it's not a complicated project. All right, so you've got your shoulder seams. Now the next thing we're going to do is the sleeve, and that may seem a little odd to you all, but um, with this type of construction, the sleeves come next. So here's my sleeve piece. I am using contrasting fabric for my sleeves, and I have marked the top of the sleeve with a small notch here, and that's how I know where to put the sleeve into the armhole. I'm going to match my notch with the shoulder seam. So we're gonna put a pin in there and you wanna make sure that the, the back part of the sleeve goes towards the back. Oops, what am I doing? This way. And the front part goes towards the front. Um, there are notches for the back on here. If there's no notch, that means it's the front of the sleeve. Really, they're about the same 
both directions. Now for this, I will put a pin at the top just to keep that um, seam from moving off the, the mark there. And the rest of it, we'll just let it go where it wants to go. Okay. So once again, we're gonna sew with 5 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna put this under here. Whoopsie, 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 what happened? Disaster. Okay, here we go. Push the wrong thing. All right. My machine is doing weird things. Anyway, here we go. We're sewing this seam. As I get close to the top edge of the shoulder, I'm going to take that pin out. I don't want to run over that pins. I would not recommend that you sew over pins. I know people do it, but it bends needles, it breaks pins, and it gives you problems with your machine. So try not to do it. If you need to, you can use plastic clips. It's another easy way to keep your fabric together. And just a couple of stitches as a bag tack there. Okay, so that's my sleeve on this side. You can give that a good pressing. Uh, I'm just going to move along and show you how to do the underarm. So obviously you do both sleeves the same. Now we're going to move on to the underarm seam. Now this is probably the most difficult part of the entire kimono because people um, get confused as to how this is supposed to work. So with a kimono, you have a straight part of the underarm and then you have this sharp angle that goes down the side part of the robe. And the reason this is complicated is because you get this bunching up of fabric right here. You can see that, what the fabric does. It's um, Even if you press the seam that way, you, there's sort of a stress point here, and it's going to pull a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the seam along the underarm. We're going to stop before this seam allowance, anchor the seam, and then we're going to flip the seam allowance over and then sew the rest of the seam down. And if you want to pin your seam allowances out of the way, you certainly can. So I'm sewing my underarm seam. I'm getting close to where this seam allowance is, so I need to go very slowly. I want to get as close as I can to those stitches without going over them. And then when we do one more stitch, now I'm going to back tack a little bit just a stitch or two to hold that in place. I'm gonna cut the threads there. And then I'm going to make sure both of my side seam allowances are matched up here. And now I'm gonna start sewing again, right here on the other side of that seam line. I'll put my needle down first and then my presser foot Coming. Okay, and I'm going to put my needle down into the fabric, raise up my uh, presser foot, and then turn the fabric and then put it back down. Okay, so this is what I have. So in this case, you probably want to press your seam allowance 
toward the sleeve. In most other cases, you're gonna press the seam allowance the other way. But for this style, I would recommend you press it towards the sleeve. It just lays better. Then you have to go in here to this little point that you've created and you're gonna to have to trim uh, or cut into these layers of fabric just a little bit to keep it nice and flat from the right side. And I'll show you in a minute. So I'm going to cut diagonally in here. I don't want to go through the stitching, but I want to get close to it. And then when I turn it right side out, this is how it should look. You're going to get a nice smooth point here underneath the arm. And granted, that's going to need some pressing uh, right there, but I might even need to trim it just a speck more. You can see how it's still bunching just a hair right there. We want to fix it so that it's not going to do that. But you can give that a good pressing. So you want to have a nice sharp corner there uh, underneath the arm. Okay, the next step will be to sew the sleeve band. So this is the opening of the sleeve. And I am using uh, my other contrasting fabric for the sleeve band. Uh, the band is about five inches wide. So what I'm going to do is fold it with the short ends together. I'm going to stitch that so we're making like a circle. Just back tack a little bit. You don't have to overdo it. Okay, so here's my seam, and you'd want to press this, of course, but I'm not doing that at the moment. Now I'm going to fold this with the raw edges together in the long direction, like so. Then we're going to apply it to the sleeve of the shirt. I'm going to remove my arm of my sewing machine for this next step because it's just be easier to get my sleeve onto the machine that way. So I'm going to start with the underarm seam here and I'm going to match that to the seam of the sleeve band and I'm going to put one pin there just to Hold it all in place. Your seams need to match, so you want to make sure that they line up properly. You can pin this uh, all the way around if that makes you more comfortable. I'm just going to put a couple of pins in here. There's a couple different ways to finish this um, part of the row, but I'm showing you the easiest option. Every pattern has a little different method to it, but this one I think is just easier, especially if you're working with a, a thicker fabric. I'm just going to pin this a little bit. And you want to make sure that the band is exactly the same size as the armhole, as the sleeve opening. If it's off a little bit, if your seam allowance is a little bit too big or too small, um, you're going to get some puckering here and you don't want that. So here we have it pinned together, and I'm going to start and sew this uh, right where that underarm seam is. So I'm going to put this back under the machine here, and we're going to take that pin out. Again, five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure all your edges are lined up. And then just take the pins out as you go along. Stitch all the way around. 
That's your first stitching. Okay, then you would want to finish your, your seam here um, with pinky shears or um, serging. Either way will work. And press it. And when you turn it to the right side, this is what I've got. So the sleeve band looks great. It's a nice way to, to finish the, the end of the sleeve. Um, you could top stitch a little bit along this seam if you prefer. I'm keeping things simple, simple here, so we're not doing any top stitching on this. But that's the sleeve band. So the band on the sleeve is very similar to the band that goes around the neck and goes down the front of the row. So I'm going to show you that next. Um, you can go back and rewatch the video if you need help doing the other sleeve. We're going to talk about the neck band next. So I have my pieces cut here for my neck band and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my two pieces. I, I cut a couple extras um, just in case I needed them, but I'll only use two. And uh, we're going to do the same thing. So the short end of the band piece together with five eighths of an inch seam allowance. We're going to fold it together like we did with the sleeve band. You'd want to press this, of course. I'm skipping the pressing part. I'm going to fold this together and use a pin to hold it in place. And this is what we're going to match to the center back of the neck. Um, you can put a couple extra pins in the rest of it here if you like, just to keep it all together or you could press it that works too we'll just stick a few pins in there for now okay so I sew my necklines probably a little bit different than um, other people do with this type of garment it, it's easiest to sew from the center back around to the shoulder and then down one side of the front and then go back and start again at the center back and sew around the neck and go down the other side of the center front. And the reason is because of the way this is cut in the front here, you end up with fabric on the bias. And when you put fabric on the bias, it tends to stretch. And when I'm matching up this band to the front of my garment, I am going to end up with more fabric somewhere. Either this is going to get bunched up or this is going to get bunched up. I've had it both ways and it's very frustrating. The best way to fix that is to start sewing at center back. It makes it so much easier. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take our um, center back neck here and I'm going to, I'm going to find the center back neck just by folding my shoulder seams together and I'm going to put a pin there so I know where it is then with we're going to turn around we're going to put right sides together I have my band here I lost it there it is okay so here's my band and I'm going to pin that seam to the center back neck. So that can't move. We have to have that stable. The rest of it is uh, fairly simple. You can pin a few pins around the curve here if it makes you more comfortable. This is going to get stitched all the way down to the front hem. And we 
would just put two or three pins in. Like so. And you want to make sure, obviously, but just double check that your band is um, long enough to go all the way down the front. So my robe, like I said, is a shorter version of the actual robe pattern. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that everything is going to line up. It's okay to have a little bit of extra of the band at the bottom. In fact, um, that's the best way to have it work out. You'd rather have that than have it short. But um, just make sure that your band is long enough to go around the opening. And the same on this side. Just put a couple pins in it this way and then I will show you the sewing part. And as I said, you know, we'd you'd want to finish your um, inside shoulder seams before you actually put the neck band on. In this case, I am just omitting that part of the tutorial. You're going to pin this down the other side. Now I have um, decided just for the sake of simplicity here today, I'm not going to show you the pocket detail or the belt and carrier detail. And I will cover that in a separate video. I just thought it was easier to do the basic part of the robe and then we'll go back and um, do the details later on. I'll do that in my next broadcast. Okay, so I'm ready to start sewing. So I'm gonna start at the center back, as I mentioned before. I'm gonna put my needle in here. Um, put my presser foot down. I'm using, again, a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and a stitch length of 3.0. Now the thing is with the back neck, you want to be sure that uh, you don't have any puckers underneath on the shoulders. And you kind of have to feel it with your fingers and just stitch a little bit at a time and just kind of check and make sure that there's no puckering there underneath the band because you're kind of sewing blind. You can't really see it. So it's very easy to get a little lump under there and not realize it and then you have to go back and rip the stitches and you don't want to do that. I guess that's why I don't use a lot of pins either because I want to make sure I can move the fabric where it needs to go at the right time. Okay, so now we're going down the front here. It's a little bit easier. And for the bottom part of it, I'm just going to match it up with my fingers. It should be an easy sew from here on in to the hem. Okay, you guys, uh, be sure and subscribe to my live broadcasts because I will have a lot of new content coming up between now and the holidays. You don't want to miss anything. So, okay. All right, so now I have sewn half of the neck band. I started at center back and sewed it all the way to the hem and there's a little bit of extra fabric here we will cut that off in a minute but for right now i'm going to sew the other side and i'm going to do this <clears throat> i still want to start at center back so i'm going to turn it over and it's important that you sew from the same direction because if you start to sew 
for example, from the hem and go up to the center back, you're going to end up with some lumpy fabrics in here. Like I said, it's, it's not going to work as well. So keep that in mind. So we're at center back again. Just one or two stitches there. And this time when I sew it, it's a little bit easier to see how this is all going to work out. So I don't have to worry about um, things getting caught under there as much, but I do have to manipulate the fabric a little bit so it's smooth. Here's my shoulder seam. And I'm gonna keep sewing down the front here. Leave me a comment, let me know how you like this new um, setup. I'm hoping this angle is the best one for you to learn from. I could try another angle too next time, um, but I'm thinking it's gonna be better to have the close up. Almost there. Okay, so there we have it. So now our neckline has the band around the entire edge. See that? It does need some pressing. Definitely needs pressing. You can um, do a bit of top stitching here. In fact, let's do that so that you see how that works. So I want to sew. Uh, for the top stitching, it doesn't matter where you start from because the fabric is already secure on, on the garment. So for here, I want to keep this seam allowance out of the way. Um, the seam allowance tends to roll forward sometimes when you're wearing a garment like this. And I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, understitching to get it to stay where it is. There's a couple ways you could do that. You can sew it from the right side, which is the preferred method. Uh, but that makes it a little bit difficult because you can't really see what's going on on the back side. So you have to feel it with your fingers but we will do it anyway. You could also stitch it right down in the ditch. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm gonna stitch it so you can see. I am um, using about an eighth of an inch uh, distance between the seam and my top stitching line here. For top stitching, I'm gonna use a little smaller stitch at a two and a half instead of a 3.0 stitch length. And for this, I'm kind of pulling the, the fabric both directions with my hand like this so it's nice and flat uh, underneath the presser foot and I'm going to sew this all the way around the neckline a fabric like velvet or something like that I wouldn't recommend um, top stitching because you're going to be see the the line from where the presser foot was on the outside of your fabric but this cotton fabric works well with a top stitching so that's what I'm doing If you have any other requests, too, for live tutorials, leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, I can do anything that will help you move along in your sewing journey. This really doesn't take too long. Helps having a shorter jacket, a shorter uh, robe that I'm doing here.
So, and as always, when you start a new project, make sure you have a, a new needle in your machine. It really saves a lot of trouble. If your needle's good and sharp, it works so much better than working with a dull needle. Almost there. Okay, so that's what it looks like finished. You can see it's a nice flat seam. The top stitching really makes a big difference in how the fabric lays. All right, so the next thing would be to trim your band at the bottom. Trim off the excess fabric there so that it's straight. We'll do that on both sides. And at this point, of course, you would want to have your uh, inside edges finished with pinking, sh pinking shears or um, serging, whatever you prefer. Okay, now for the hem. I'm going to do the hem next, and uh, that is really it. So the, people have different ways of doing the hem, and this is my preferred method, is to do two lines of stitching. And I learned this in uh, fashion design school. And the reason that we do this is because it makes a nice flat hem. It also is a great way uh, to get a consistent width as you sew. And it, it, I've had people tell me that it's a waste of thread. And I do not agree with that at all. It makes a huge difference in the way the hem lays and the, the way the garment um, performs in the long run because it's just a really durable finish. So what we're going to do is we're turning over the hem about a quarter of an inch and you can press it in place if you wish, but I prefer to just turn it over with my fingers. Um, this space between the two teeth of the presser foot is about a quarter of an inch. So as I work, I make sure that my fabric is turned over about this much and I always know that it's the right width. I'm going back to a 3.0 stitch length for this. And always start with your needle down in the fabric. So we're going to take a, just one or two small stitches there. And then we're going to sew this quarter of an inch hem. And this is uh, one of those things where it's really preferred to not use pins if you can help it, but Get used to pulling the fabric through the machine and getting it uh, the right width just with your fingers. And it's so much faster. Oh, my back seam is off just a little bit here, so we're just going to trim this. So we can keep going. Okay. So we can do this all around the bottom hem of the row. I'm stopping a little bit short of my seam because I still haven't sewn the other sleeve into the other side. So I'm going to stop it there, but you get the idea. So that's the first line of stitching. You can trim your threads 
And then we're going to fold this line up one inch. So there's um, lots of tools out there for measuring. You can choose what you like. I love this little hem ruler with a sliding gauge. I use it all the time. It's just the right size to uh, measure a hem like this. I'm going to put a one inch uh, mark on here. And I'm just going to fold my fabric with my fingers again till I get it to the right width. And that's where I'm going to start. Now, when I begin sewing this time, I'm going to sew over my first line of stitching. So it's really helpful to have the first line of stitching there. It's already a quarter of an inch. It's, um, it's consistent uh, width from the edge, the fold of the fabric. And it's just easy to line everything up. I'm just going to sew right on top of it. And the thing is, when you're done, no one's going to know that you have stitched this twice. If I can sew straight. <laughs> okay, we can do this. So here we are. We're just measuring. I just measure every now and again just to make sure that I'm about an inch, you know, inch away from the edge. And I'm going to do this all the way around bottom part of the rope. So do this again here. And some people like to press their hems up, and I understand that. You know, it's, everybody has a little different method that they prefer to use. Almost there. Okay, once again, I'm cutting uh, my threads here and stopping short of the other side because I haven't finished uh, my other sleeve yet. But that is really all there is to the rope. That is the very basic part of the rope. So we have the band on the neck. We have a center back seam, which is nicely centered. We have top stitching uh, down the front of the band. The bottom, we have a nice um, clean finish here. Nice point, it just needs some pressing and it's looking really well done. The sleeve is finished. We have the sleeve band here. Probably go back in and top stitch a little bit more along here like I did down the front. We have a nice uh, shape under the sleeve for the kimono seam. If you get any pulling going on there, like I just got a little bit here. Some of that comes out with pressing, but uh, you might need to clip in a little bit more underneath the arm there and that is all ready to go so the finishing touches like the uh, belt and so forth i'm going to go over in another tutorial and i will post a photo of this when i'm done so make sure and subscribe for my next uh so long i'll be having uh, more projects for you to work on thanks so much for watching bye